Hey, Sean, hey, everybody, how are welcome. you? Good, good, good. Hey, Barbara. Um, so we're here with uh, Barbara tonight. Um, she is, uh, you know, she's like the queen of bundling and a lot of other stuff. So, um, you know, we've done a few in the past. Um, and I, I think, uh, you know, she always gives a lot of value. We give a lot of value. And we only bring people on to do webinars, you know, who are going to give you a lot of value and not, you know. Oh, you know, everybody has something to sell, but, um, you know, we're going to bring you a lot of value. If you buy something, you don't buy something, you're going to learn a lot about bundling. I know I'm going to learn a lot. Um, yeah. And at the end, um, uh, I think we sent out a couple of emails about it, but, uh, you know, we have something that I thought would really go well with, uh, with bundling. And that is, uh, we have a service where we provide you the top hundred thousand products, um, across uh, 23 different categories, basically every category that we sell in. Uh, so, and that's updated daily. So you're basically getting about 2.3 million um, of the top 100,000 products that, um, you know, that are selling on Amazon. So it's only stuff that sells well, obviously, if it's in, in the top 100,000. And we update that uh, every, uh, every single day, well, Monday through Friday. So, um, you know, and usually it's $68 a month, but we're gonna give, be giving somebody lifetime access so you know eight thousand wow. dollars that's awesome but you got to stay on the webinar guys you got to stay yes. on the webinar to the end right so i can give you a ton of content in there and then um uh, sean's right. gonna pick one so of we'll you draw, right we'll draw it at the end and we'll um we'll get you all the information to get in on that um but stick around to the end i already have everything loaded in you know a um you know one of those random pickers so i have everybody's email address in there um, and uh, as soon as we get done talking about bundling, we'll, uh, I'll go ahead and share my screen. And I'll show you everything. Um, uh, you know, I'll show you the picking and everything. So, you know, you know, everything's legit. And, uh, you know, we'll keep drawing until, you know, somebody is here. That, that <coughs> cool. Awesome. Thank give you. it away no matter what. Cool. All right. So let's get right into it. Bundling. Well, first of all, thank you, Sean, for inviting me on. I know you have um, uh, some really wonderful fanatical followers. And if you've ever met me, you know that I love fanatical niche markets. So I, uh, I love that I'm able to share what um, my special spin on, uh, on bundling at, to, to your tribe, as it, as it were. So uh, just a couple of ground rules. Uh, go ahead, and if you have any questions, I've got a lot to cover in this webinar. I'm going to give you a ton of content. I'm going to give you six steps to bundling that I follow. So um, to keep the flow going, if you have any questions, put them in the chat, and then um, when we have time at the end, we'll try to answer some of them, and then we'll get to the rest of them on the Facebook group um, later, maybe tomorrow. How, does that sound fair, Sean? Definitely. Okay, good stuff. So is it okay with you that I just get started, guys? I'm just going to jump in. Is that all right with you? All right, so let's just get going. Bundling for fun and profit. My name is Barbara Drazga, of course, with Sean Mayo. And uh, you can uh, go ahead after the, the webinar is over and go check out bundle.seanmayo.com to see um, a whole bunch of information and free videos and webinars and a free lesson for the Bundle Masterclass. And, um, and you can check that out after the webinar at bundle.seanmayo.com. So somebody is drawing on my screen, so I'm going to stop the share here because that happens sometimes, which is uh, kind of bizarre. <laughs> I don't know what, what that is, but we'll just uh, go back. There we go. Tonight, here's what we're going to cover tonight. The importance of owning your Amazon listing. So in the chat, go ahead and tell me if you're RA, OA, wholesale, private label, how do you source products? Go ahead and throw that in the chat, and I'm going to keep talking. So tonight, we're going to cover the importance of owning your Amazon listing. Why do niche market research before you ever buy a product? What's the importance of doing competitive research, again, before you buy any products? How to create an added value product using wholesale and factory direct sourcing. If you're not already, you'll learn in the Bundle Masterclass how to do some wholesale sourcing as well to do bundles. And then what does a winning listing look like? Okay, we're just going to keep going. Go ahead and put in the chat uh, how you source, what your main um, sourcing is, and we'll, uh, we'll cycle back around to the chat in a little bit. So who am I? I am Barbara Drazga, AKA The Deal Diva is my nickname. Uh, some other time I will tell you how somebody named me this in an auction. I didn't give myself that moniker, but it stuck. I'm the creator of the Bundle Masterclass. It was launched last year. 
I've been selling online since 1996. Yes, I'm older than I look. Good genes, I guess. <laughs> I'm an active Amazon seller. Uh, so I am in the trenches with you guys. I'm not just, you know, I just didn't throw a bunch of information together. And uh, um, I am actually in there bundling. I am 80% wholesale and bundles and 20% private label seller. I consider myself, I, I, don't, I don't feel comfortable with the term of guru. Uh, I like the term practitioner, which I spell wrong. So forgive me for that. But practitioner means that I'm in there doing it. I'm living, eating, breathing bundles. So when I learn something new, I bring it to you. I have multiple streams of income. I like having passive incomes and uh, having evergreen bundles is actually one of those quasi passive income streams I have. And then I'm a constant learner. So I'm going to a lot of events just in the first four months of this year, including going to China again for multiple trade shows um, and um, uh, marketing events and Amazon events and wholesale trade shows. So as I learn things, I bring that information and put it into the bundle masterclass. So I'm gonna uh, ask you guys to just turn off your videos. If you find that um, your video is showing up on the screen, just make sure you turn that off so that it's just me and Sean on the screen. Okay, so what some, some people are saying at the Bundle Masterclass, Anita Breeze, you may have heard of her. Uh, she actually, a lot of people call her the queen of bundles because she did an ebook on bundling several years ago, and she is actually a student of the Bundle Masterclass. Um, and then Debbie Tremblay, again, a lot of people who are in the, um, in the Amazon marketplace have given me, a, have been kind enough to give me some testimonials from the Bundle Masterclass, and just wanted to share a couple of those with you here. Okay, let's keep going. Why bundle? Why should we bundle? So Amazon's changed in the past couple of years. If you started selling on Amazon, and go ahead and put in the chat how many years you've been selling or how many months you've been selling on Amazon. Go ahead and put that in the chat for me. So, you know, if you started on Amazon five, six years ago, it was a different marketplace, right? Uh, in the past year or so, there have been a lot more scammers and fakers and fake accounts, and it's become a little bit more of a minefield to be a third-party seller on Amazon. We have more challenges to deal with, uh, more inauthentic claims, a lot more brands just being locked down um, and uh, categories being locked down, seller saturation, price tanking if you're a wholesale seller or if you're RA, OA, you, you could find a listing where there's maybe three sellers and you source a bunch of stuff and send it into Amazon and within three weeks there's a hundred sellers tanking the price right has anybody ever had that happen I'm sure you have put it in the chat yes you've had price tanking and seller saturation on some of your listings so bundling is a way is an easy entry private label so bundling allows you to test a small amount of products on Amazon and own the listing before you go buy a, you know, a $20,000 container of you know, thousands of products. You can bundle maybe you know, one bundle but throw, put a dozen into the, into the warehouse to see how it does and get some traction and then go back and resource it. And I'm going to tell you places to get some um, uh, products for your bundles in this presentation. So stay on the presentation. Now Amazon is starting to favor brand owners more and more. Because man, Amazon's mandate is to have an amazing customer experience for their customers, right? So the more unique products they have in their catalog, the better it is for their customers. So they will tend to favor brand owners more and more as, as we go on um, over people who are just jumping on other people's listings. Would you agree, Sean? Just nod your head. You can't hear me? Do you want me to unmute you? You're good? Are you okay? <laughs> Okay, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to unmute you, Sean. You okay, Sean? Yeah, I, de I didn't know if I muted myself. I couldn't unmute myself. So, uh, Yeah, yeah, I definitely uh, agree with that. Yeah, I saw you shaking your head, so I had to get your input. Okay, so um, control of listing details. This is a big one for me. I, I'm a little bit of a control freak, okay? I'm a lot of a control freak, <laughs> especially when it comes to my income streams because, you know, I am the, the breadwinner for my family, you know, for my, for my household. So I want to control as many elements as I can in whatever my sales channels are. So if I can find a way through private label and bundling to own my listing so I can um, test out marketing on it and tweak keywords and tweak titles and tweak pictures. That's where I want to be with my business because I have less ambiguity uh, in my income than if I were just doing RA and jumping out of the people's listings. Make sense? Okay, I'm going to go fast. So I want to remind you guys to get a pad of paper, turn off your cell phone, get a pen, and take a lot of notes because I'm going to give you a ton of content, I promise. My approach to bundling. 
So a lot of folks are going to tell you, you know, you can go on YouTube and put, you know, how to bundle for Amazon and almost everyone you run into is going to tell you, just go, go to a big box store, go to a dollar store and buy a bunch of stuff and throw it in a poly bag and send it in. Now, while this is one approach to bundling, um, my approach is completely upside down. I will not source a product. I won't even look for products to source until I do my market research and identify fanatical niche markets to go after before I ever look at products. And that's how my training differs completely from pretty much anybody else out there that I've seen who's teaching a little bit of bundling. So you wanna know your market before you source anything. And by knowing your market, you wanna look at um, what a, somebody's passions are and what their problems are. Because your bundle of products is either gonna feed their passion or it's gonna solve their problem. And the more detail you have and the more understanding you have about a market's passions or problems, the better you can create a bundle that meets those things. Then you wanna look at your competition. Again, we haven't bought one single product yet. We're gonna identify competition, then build and evaluate bundle concepts, and then identify suppliers, and you don't have to just go RA. You can do wholesale, private, uh, white labeling. I'm gonna show you how you can identify some suppliers. You can create a custom piece so you can own that bundle so nobody can jump on it, and then you test it, market it, pay-per-click, drive your own traffic, automate, delegate, rather, lather, rinse, repeat. This is my whole process. <sighs> Let me take a break. <laughs> Sean, did you have something to say? I'll un unmute you. You want to share no, no, anything? No, I'm good. No, I'm good. Uh, Joe just want, uh, had asked if, uh, I mean, obviously it's yes, but um, can you do bundles, merchant fulfilled? Yes, you can do bundles, merchant fulfilled. Absolutely. In fact, there's, um, there's something called virtual bundling that you can do too. Uh, but we'll get into that later. Yes, you can do bundles merchant fulfilled uh, because the, the process, it's merchant fulfilled is just one way to fulfill what you've already created. M uh, the, your first, in my opinion, your first focus must be on understanding your market, a uh, target market, a niche market before you ever build a, a bundle. Does that make sense? All right, I'm going to keep going. So number one, niche market research. And uh, Sean, if you have a question, because you're seeing the chat and I'm not, just kind of wave at me because I can see you on my screen. Right. Now, keep in mind, guys, go ahead and put your questions in the chat, um, and we'll get to them towards the end, and that way I've, I've kind of got the flow of the presentation, and I can get through a whole bunch of information. Does that sound fair? Okay, here we go. So, know your market before sourcing. sourcing. Identify passions and problems. Conduct deep keyword research before you source anything, which means I use, here's some of the tools I use, and there are a lot of keyword research tools out there. These are just a few of them. Merchantwords.com, if you haven't heard of it. Um, I'm sure scope is there's a free um, by seller labs is a free extension for Chrome called scope keywords.io or keyword.io go check that and Google Trends are just a couple of ways that and then also predictive search in Google and predictive search in Amazon and then I look for niches where I can combine high volume keywords now I call these mashups um, so for instance dog lovers who like Harley motorcycles so the, I, I think you'd all agree that um, both people who love dogs and people who love Harleys are really fanatical niche markets. Now, if you could put a bundle together for people who love dogs and love riding Harleys, and you can uh, find products that are really re relevant to feeding that passion, um, you've got kind of a double whammy with that mashup of the keyword research, right? And the amount of people who are searching for that thing. And then again, another mashup could be organizational tools and RV owner or organizational tools and mechanics, organizational tools and stay-at-home moms, or uh, organizational tools and, um, and uh, homeschoolers, right? So if you take uh, markets that have a lot of uh, keyword, keyword uh, searches in and of themselves and you mash them up, you increase the effectiveness of your bundles. Okay, so let's brainstorm. Go ahead and put in the chat. What are some things that you know people are passionate about? But I'm gonna challenge you to really niche it down instead of just saying dog lovers. All right, get creative here. What kind of dog? You know, there, I, I just heard on the news that yesterday there was a, a brand new national champion of this national dog show, and it's a cute little poofy Bichon. I don't even know how to spell Bichon, but I'll bet you people are searching for Bichon dogs a lot more now on the internet than they were, you know, before this happened. So how about people who are, um, the niche is people who show their dogs or show their cats. Or how about a niche of um, um, miniature dachshunds? Not just dachshunds, but miniature dachshunds. 
Or how about um, if we go after a problem, it could be uh, a dog breed or an elderly dog that has a specific kind of physical problem. Like from what I understand, um, German shepherds a lot of times get hip problems in their older age. And uh, sometimes English setters, as they get older, start losing their hearing. So these are really niche markets, not just dog lover, but niche it down into something really specific. Okay, so I'm sure you guys have put a bunch in the chat and we'll cycle back around to that. But I wanted to get your brain juices going a little bit on fanatical niche markets. Okay, so I'm actually going to come over here in the chat and just see what's in there and interact with you guys a little bit. And then we'll come back to competitive research. So, Sean, I'm going to unmute you so we can chat a little bit. All right, let's see what's going on in the chat here. Can you bundle Amazon sub backyard chickens? Yes, geriatric dogs, right. Hydroponics and seniors. You know, Tracy, it's funny you should say that. I, I don't consider myself a senior, although in May I'll be 55, which means I will now qualify for senior discounts in some places, which is just like boggles my mind. Um, but I actually just bought for Christmas for myself an Aero Garden. I think that's hydroponics. I got all kinds of green stuff growing in my kitchen now. So uh, I am now one of, I'm a target market for your hydroponic stuff. I would buy it if you could sell me something that tasted good. <laughs> so yeah, these are great ideas. These are fabulous ideas for niche markets. Thank you for sharing. Um, let's see, Amazon, let's see, any other questions in here? Okay, so I'm gonna head back to the presentation here. Um, Competitive research. So now that we've identified some fanatical niche markets, we need to see what the competitive space is. Now by competitive research, here's what I don't mean. I don't mean somebody who's selling the exact same bundle you're considering. I'm talking about the people who are competing for the same customers that you are. So let's say you're competing for Harley lovers, uh, Harley Davidson lovers who also are dog lovers, or the RV market. You wanna see what else is being sold to that market so you can identify where are the holes in those product mixes and where are the weaknesses in those listings and the weaknesses in the products that you can leverage in doing something even better in your bundle. Does that make sense? Put yes in the chat if it makes sense to you. Okay, in a few minutes, I'm going to show you an example of a really great listing, what I think is a really great listing. So hang in there. So you want to make your bundle irresistible. Here's my goal when I create a bundle. And by the way, my goal is to create at least two new bundles a week. That's eight to 10 a month new bundles. And that would be the equivalent of you sourcing, if you're doing RA or OA, um, of you running around store to store sourcing a bunch of product that you might not be able to source again, right? You might not be able to replenish. Um, I create eight to 10 new bundles a month and evergreen bundles so that they sell year round. I'm not talking about seasonal bundles where you're doing Easter and then Valentine's because you're always coming up with a new bundle that then is no longer sellable for a year after that um, season. Now there's nothing wrong with doing seasonal bundles as filler um, during the year, but I really like to have a base of evergreen bundles that earn me money over and over in markets that are not seasonal. Okay, so I want their response, uh, a customer's response when they see my listing on the page with other people selling to them, I want them to think, shut up and take my money when they see my listing. And I have to get them to click on the listing. So optimization of your listing is really key because if they don't click, it doesn't matter how good your product is, which means that your, your photograph and your title, the first thing they see have to be just amazing so that they can get into your listing and say, shut up and take my money. So you wanna create an added value experience. Now here's what I don't want you to do. I don't want you to bundle stuff. And that means, uh, I'm sure you've all seen them. You've been on Amazon and you see a bundle of a couple of things in there and some uh, that maybe a, a group of different cute coffee mugs or maybe it's a coffee mug with a Bichon dog on it with, um, with a couple of other cute Bichon dog things for coffee lovers, right? Bichon dog flavored coffee, who knows? And then they throw in a, um, a random like keychain that has nothing to do with Bichon dogs just because they don't want anybody else to hop on their listing. So that's not having a mindset of having the customer's needs first. So I call it bundle stuffing. You do not want to just throw something random in a bundle just so that you can um, keep it competition proof. There are other ways to competition proof your bundle that are actually add value to the customer. Does that make sense? Say yes in the chat. Okay, so your initial passion and problem research is going to reveal what the customer wants and needs and you use that information to create your bundle. You make it unique. So a lot of people will just go to the store and uh, like the dollar store, nothing wrong with that. You can get a lot of great ideas at the dollar store, but they'll say, okay, I'm just gonna take this, 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 these four items from the dollar store and put them in a bundle. Well, guess what? 
everybody else can go to the same dollar store and do the exact same thing. You want to make this unique to the customer's needs. You want to over deliver, create unique packaging. You can put inserts in. For example, I have, um, I have one bundle that is a, a very unique set of coffee mugs for an, uh, a fanatical niche market. People who love zombies. I don't get it. I don't do the zombie thing, but I know that there's a fanatical niche market of people who love zombies. So I have a set of zombie mugs that I put zombie related coffee with, and I had a crossword puzzle, a zombie crossword puzzle created. I paid a guy on Fiverr five, 10 bucks to create a zombie <laughs> crossword puzzle. He knew the market better than I did. Um, and it's kind of fun, tongue in cheek. And then I, I sourced some zombie pens and I put a pen with that as well. So my insert is, hey, you know, and the sales marketing um, text around it is you can sit and have zombie coffee when you wake up, you know, so you're no longer, you know, you're waking up half dead and you're doing your crossword puzzle while you're having your zombie coffee and your zombie mug, right? So these inserts add value to that experience of using the product. So you want to ask the right questions. Here's what you don't want to ask. What else can I throw in this bundle? You want to ask, what else does the ideal buyer want or need? And add that to your bundle. Does that make sense? I know I'm going fast, guys. Do you have uh, any questions, Sean? I'm going to unmute you real quick. Anything in the chat I need to address? Nope, yes? Oh, can't hear you, Sean. I think you're muted on your end. Oh, there oh, we go. Sorry. Did you, um, do you use a third-party prep center or do you package all your bundles yourself? Yes. And no. You only gave me yes and no answers there. So yes, for instance, I just had uh, Jared Husband. He's got a prep center here in Phoenix. He came and picked up a bunch of stuff for me uh, for a new bundle. And he, he was able to order the boxes cheaper than I could. So he just had everything. He, he took care of everything in the past 48 hours. He prepped them. He put them together, bubble wrapped them. And uh, the shipment went out today. And... I do some myself if I'm doing a smaller quantity that I want to test. And I have a couple of little girls across the street, 13 year old twins who will come over when I've got a lot of prep to do and I want to do it in the house and they'll come over and set up a little assembly line and they'll do it for me. So uh, yes and no. Sometimes I use prep center and some, Oh, and the fourth option is I actually have two suppliers who will prep. Um, I use their products in a bundle and I'll send them a unique piece or I'll send them unique packaging and they will prep wholesale companies. They will prep it there and send it to Amazon for me. So I, I use multiple ways to get my product into um, bundles and into Amazon. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, do you know what they charge for that or does it depend on how big the bundle is? Uh, it's, you have to uh, negotiate with your prep companies. There's a lot of prep companies out there and it's all about negotiating it. So I want you to keep your eye on, eye on the ball. The eye on the ball would be the research for the, the, ideal target market and research for the products that meet that target market and then making sure your numbers work so that whatever the press prep company is going to charge you can that is built into the cost of that bundle so that you still make money so don't get caught up in little details about you know what a prep company is going to charge if you do your job right and your job is target market research and then product research or competitor research and product research it doesn't matter what they charge because all prep companies are going to be about the same rate does that make sense yeah, and it really depends on, you know, what your bottom line is. You know, I don't worry about how much it sells for. I worry about how much I make, you know, so. We lost you, Sean. Can't hear you. No, nope, can't hear Sean. So Sean's saying it's all about what you're going to make. So in, you, uh, focus on the right number is what I think Sean is saying. So instead of focusing on, oh, the prep com company is going to charge me a dollar and a half, two dollars for a bundle, you want to, go ahead, Sean, I can hear you now. If my bundle's selling for $30, does it make sense for me? If it saves me five hours of my time making it happen and I can pay the prep company to get it done for me so I can uh, focus on identifying more niche markets and building more bundle concepts. I'm going to pay them to do it. So you have to ask yourself, what is your time worth? Does it make sense? Definitely. Okay. I can hear you now, Sean. I think that's what Sean was saying. Any other questions real quick? Uh, do you have a specific margin when you bundle? Uh, I actually go by dollar amount. I like to make very, very bare bones minimum $8 at the lowest price of whatever I'm selling it on. Uh, I prefer a minimum $10 and I can, I easily get that because a lot of, 
a lot of people are out of fear. They will buy a couple of dollar store items and sell a bundle for like $12.99 or $10.99. There's just not enough money in it. All right, this is a business for me. So I go, my minimum sell price is $25. I won't um, sell a product, and by product I mean bundle, unless I can get at least $24.99 for it. Because it's the same amount of effort to do the research and the competitive research and the product research for a bundle I sell for $12 as it is for a bundle I sell for $50. Does that make sense? I, I mean, it does to me, but. Right. Oh, I was asking the guys in the chat. Right. Well, nobody so Look at the right. So guys in the, in the chat, look, look at the right numbers. All right. Focus on the right numbers. Is that okay? I'll stop asking. Does that make sense? Of course it makes sense. Focus on the right numbers. So uh, where does, uh, are we on where to source? Right. Okay. So where to source? Let's talk about sourcing. So uh, I didn't take a look in the chat uh, how many people are doing um, RAOA. If, you've, if you're into wholesale, this is going to be a, a little, an easier leap for you. But if you haven't learned wholesale yet, uh, in the Bundle Masterclass, you do learn how to source wholesale, how to negotiate with wholesale suppliers. Okay, so you want to ask yourself when you, you're putting together a bundle, you've chosen some products, you want to ask yourself what the viability is of the products in that bundle. And by that I mean, do you have long-term access to your bundle products? So for seasonal products, for example, uh, you can, it's gonna be tougher if you're sourcing um, Halloween products. I'm gonna mute you off, Sean. Uh, it's gonna be tougher if you're sourcing Halloween products um, uh, to get those same products year round, for example. But if you're creating evergreen bundles and you wanna make sure that your suppliers can get you that product, the products for those bundles over and over again. Uh, wholesale is a great way to source products. Uh, manufactured direct from China, India, Mexico, Canada, U.S. You can actually um, uh, have things private labeled and white labeled in the U.S. Now, by white label, I mean you can find a supplier who will put your label, uh, your label on their finished product. They'll even take maybe a couple of their products that are related to each other and bundle it together for you but using your label on it. Right? So consider white labeling somebody else's products. You can manufacture things yourself. You can uh, go to Etsy is a great place to find unique items and you can negotiate with an Etsy seller who makes a specific type of product to make a product for you in specific colors. For example, um, let's say you wanted to make a, uh, a bundle for different football teams, but you can't use the, the team's names or NFL or, you know, or baseball teams, but you can use colors. Right. So if you could put together or also flags like um, the Italian flag and uh, the American flag, you can do a red, white and blue bundle. Right. Um, but you can have something custom made to put in your bundle by an Etsy seller, for example. Local stores. I love going into local big box stores because they are always a season ahead, especially Costco. OK, how many of you have walked into a Michael's or Hobby Lobby in like July and there's Christmas stuff set up? All the time. Happens all the time, right? Even Costco especially, they're really good at this. You can see, I mean, these, these companies have done millions of dollars of research to understand uh, what seasonal things sell. Organization stuff in January, for example, camping stuff now. So you can get kind of a hint by going into stores and just looking at products to get ideas for niche target markets. And then you turn the product over, You'll look at the back and it's going to tell you where you can source that product unless it's white labeled to that company like Greenbrier, for instance, is, uh, is Dollar Tree. Um, but you can usually find the wholesaler or the supplier's name on the back of a product so you can go direct to them to source that product. Okay? I know I'm going fast, but uh, just keep taking notes. It'll all start making sense. I, I promise. So here are some examples. Um, I just went to Google and this was a 30-second process. I went to Google. Google is your friend, by the way. Remember that statement, Google is your friend. And I typed in wholesale plush. And right on the first page, I found this company. Write it down, J-O-I-S-S-U dot com. Joysu, I'm guessing, dot com. And here is this cute little plush sea life bundle. Now, what could you do with this? Let's brainstorm a little bit in the chat. How could you make this unique? And who would your target market be for this? Maybe it's, um, how about homeschoolers? where they're learning about sea life and uh, they're studying Jacques Cousteau, right? What else could you put with these six things? You put all these little guys together and you put uh, multiple other things in there um, as an educational tool, for example. You could also sell this, uh, let's say you sourced 
six sets of these and you put 36 of them together and you sold it as a classroom pack or um, you sold it as a, uh, you could put this together with maybe some um, Easter eggs and uh, uh, some um, sea related Easter stuff or, or, or ribbons and things and you could sell it as a, a kit to put together your own sea related Easter basket. There's all sorts of things you could do with this. Okay, has anybody put in the chat some ideas on what else you can put with this? Let's check the chat. Sean, I'll unmute you. See anything interesting in there, Sean? Uh, add blanket or a book. Mm. Book. There you go. A sleepy time, right? A, a sleep with the fishies. A kid who is just enamored with, um, with anything that has to do with the sea, right? That's a great idea. A pillow, a book. I love that. Uh, Claudette said VBS. I'm assuming that's Vacation Bible School. Oh, interesting. Bundle. Um, that's an interesting niche. First trip to the beach bundle. There you, there you go. You can put that together with a little suitcase, right? Very cute. I love that. You guys are coming up with some really great ideas. I'll make sure to save the chat and send that to Sean so he can make it available to you. So keep putting your ideas in the chat because uh, we're going to be able to share that with everybody afterwards. Uh, what about rules on opposing brands? Yeah, so we're going to answer those questions at the end so I can get through the rest of the presentation. Um, so I just want to kind of give you an overview of my, my, different, my six steps to creating bundles, and then we'll get into more details if we have time at the end. And if not, you can go ahead and post, Sean, what Facebook group can they post more questions on and tag me, and I will get in that Facebook group and answer in full. Right. We'll, uh, we'll post the link to your Facebook group at the end. Okay, or your Facebook group, because this is your tribe, and I'll answer questions in your Facebook group, okay? Happy. Okay. Okay. So uh, Sean will put that in the chat and go ahead and uh, anything that's a little bit outside of what I'm showing in this presentation, just so we can, I can um, respect your time and stick, uh, stick to an hour time. We're going to answer in, uh, in the Facebook group. Okay. So here's another thing, private label baking supplies. And this was the first page of, of uh, Google. And there's two different, um, I'm pointing at the screen here like you can see me, but there's two different ones that kind of stood out to me. Clabber Girl, where they will put your brand on their baking supplies. Now think niche. So um, it came up about a month ago. It came up uh, this, this really fanatical niche market I had no idea about. Came up on my Facebook feed randomly. People who like uh, mermaids, but more than like, like them. They dress up like mermaids. They jump in the water and swim around like mermaids. They do makeup like mermaids. They wear these, these beautiful wigs with multiple colors. Uh, they have things on their walls that are related to mermaids. They have mermaid birthday parties for their dogs, for example. So it's a really fanatical niche market. So what if you put together, and we'll do a mashup, people having birthday parties and people who, who love mermaids or unicorns or something specific, right? And then you have, you go to Clabber Girl and you say, look, I want a pink baking mix with a, uh, a pink packet of, uh, of mix to, for, the, for the icing and cupcake cups and, and you put some, um, you, some uh, mermaid um, decorations in there and mermaid candles and whatever. And then you put together a, mer a bundle for a mermaid birthday party. But it's branded with your company name on it, with your brand on it. Not company name, but your brand. So it, it really is kind of that simple when you get out of the box and you start thinking about what passions uh, you can feed with your product or what problems you can solve. And then another one over here is uh, this traditional baking.com. Go check that out. They'll, they'll, uh, they have their own recipes and they'll private label their cookies for, so you could, you know, have a really specific cookie flavor, like people who like macadamia nuts or people who like cookies with nuts and have three different versions created one with macadamia one with peanuts one with walnuts right and there's a bundle of three different cookies for example just off the top of my head okay so now let's look at uh, aliexpress this is another way again we're talking about sourcing products this is just one more way one to get ideas and two um to find niche uh to, to niche down those ideas so i went to aliexpress and i typed in kitchen organization and these are just three of the, the uh, available options, but there were so many other things you could do. So if you put together, uh, you could do a multivariant on this. You put this little guy together with a towel, with a hanger, with some hooks, and a couple of other things, uh, maybe make it six pieces, but then you have a pink variation, a blue variation, a yellow variation, a silver variation, a black variation, right? So you could very easily just try one, basic one, and then 
um, source different colors and, and roll out different variations. And again, this is a lot of this is just quick research on Google, Pinterest, AliExpress, just to get ideas. So what are the five elements of a winning listing? And there are six written here, but because uh, <laughs> I always over deliver. So it all starts with keyword research and then photos, 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 because when you're, when somebody searches for unicorn birthday party, you're competing against everybody else who comes up on that first page. So your main photo has got to be so compelling that it gets them to click through. So the first is they have to find you with whatever they're typing in keywords, but then the photo has to convert them and the title has to convert them to a click. Once they get on your listing, it's the bullets and the features, the supporting photos, the description. You want to answer the question, why do I need this? Why should I buy this? You want to tell a story in your description. Make it real for them. Paint a picture of how their life will be better once they purchase your bundle. And you want to make sure you do um, a long tail search, uh, keyword search words and put it in your keywords in the back end. Um, we're limited to 250 characters now uh, under the search term field in the back end of our listings. Uh, so you'll want to make sure that you don't go over that and that you're not duplicating your keywords that you already have in the titles and bullets and features and description in your back end. Okay, and we, we go over that in depth and I actually have interviews with several people about uh, really how to do uh, photographs really well and listing optimization really well, all in the Bundle master class. So here's an example, uh, it, come January, end of December, I was worrying about, <laughs> about getting fit <laughs> and uh, I, I, I just wrote get fit in Amazon, something that simple and I came up with this bundle I thought was absolutely amazing so I had to show it to you. Look at the initial photo, made me click on it. Uh, it's very clean, laid out, easy to identify. This Wang Fen on the carry bag, that is their brand. They had it, this is the uh, custom piece they put in there, is the carry bag with their brand on it. And then they have all these amazing photos plus lifestyle photos on it. This was a shut up and take my money moment for me. This is a great bundle. They did a fabulous job in their title with their keywords and making it uh, a legible, a readable title so it, it makes sense. They didn't just keyword stuff. And then um, they supported it with these fabulous bullets here. And if anybody is, if you haven't downloaded, it's, it's, I don't remember how much it is, but it's really cheap every year. It's called Rev Seller. This little guy right here, it, um, it's a Chrome extension that pops up on my listings to give me all of the relevant data for a listing right in front of me. And it's called Rev Seller. I don't remember how much it is, but it's um, just saved me a ton of time, so it doesn't really matter. It's not a lot of money. Okay, so let's keep, keep going. Let's do the math. So I'm going to go over to the chat, and um, let's see where we're at here. Let's see if we've got any questions here I can answer, Sean. And unmute yourself. Yep. Um, okay. How many items per bundle, ideally? Tracy, that is, I'm going to challenge you to ask a, a better question. So it, there's not any, it could be two pieces. I have bundles with just two pieces because that's all I need to in, increase the value to that, to, to solve a problem or meet that passion. Now, like I said, don't bundle stuff. Okay. A confused mind doesn't buy. So if you throw a hundred things in a bundle, um, you know, depending on what the target market is or it might be relevant, but you know, make it look at it as though you were the buyer. As though you were the customer. What do you want to see in the bundle as the customer? Okay, sea life puzzles. I love mermaids. There we go. <laughs> Team oriented bundles. Yep, I love that. I haven't done that yet, but your attention to detail is paying off. Thank you, Rustam. I appreciate that. I am very much a detail person. Okay, so we're just going to keep going. Let's do the math. Now, this is real math. This is absolute real math, guys. Uh, and Okay, here we go. So if you just create five bundles that net just $10 each, just 10 bucks. Let me see if I can just get me up here. Um, no, that's Sean. No worries. Uh, okay. So if you just, if you create five bundles, now remember, I create at least two new bundles a week. That's minimum eight bundles, new bundles a month. I create, if you create just five bundles that net $10 each, get out your calculators and you sell 50 of each a month, again, very doable, that equals $2,500 net monthly profit, because I'm talking net after all of the prep is done, um, whether you pay a prep center or not, I, I wanna make 10 bucks a bundle, 10 bucks a product. 
and I want to sell at least 50, 50 of each a month. That's 2,500 net profit monthly, net. And that's $30,000 net annual just from five bundles. If you're doing evergreen bundles, and be careful, um, if you just do seasonal, you, now, I add seasonal bundles throughout the year just to kind of, you know, pop on those seasons, but I don't rely on seasonal bundles. I have a steady income of regular bundles that is growing as I build evergreen bundles, and then I'll have these pops during Valentine's Day and Easter and back to school and et cetera, right? And smaller pops throughout the year. But you want to create evergreen bundles first so you have that basis, so you have a little bit of stability, um, and then you can add bundles, uh, you know, seasonal bundles on top of it. Sean, do you have any questions for me? No, no, I'm, I'm good so far. Okay, so is it okay with you guys that I tell you a little bit about my bundle masterclass? I just launched it about nine months ago. It's fairly new. Um, I've, I keep adding more content, content. to it. Uh, go ahead and mute yourself, Sean, because you're a feedback from you. There you go. So I'm going to go ahead and just share a little bit about what you get in the Bundle Masterclass, 42 plus lessons, just like this, me doing what I do. Most of it is me teaching you with an outline, but then I also have live, I call them show and tells, where you're looking over my shoulder and I show you, we do kind of an unscripted, we just get on the web and I show you this is how I find fanatical niche markets. And I let you just look over my shoulder, and a lot of times we never know what we're gonna find. We found some really crazy like niches that I had no clue existed just by getting on there and starting to dig around. I love doing niche market research. So we'll have show and tells, you're gonna learn customer needs discovery. I'm gonna show you a tool when you have, you know, I'm, I'm ADD, I'm an entrepreneur. A lot of us have too, so many things going on. So I have a tool called the Idea Evaluation Matrix, and it allows me to evaluate all of my bundle ideas against a set of criteria of what I look for in bundles so that I can rank those ideas so I know what to do first, second, and third. And I show you that in the very first module of uh, the Bundle Masterclass. We'll talk about product opportunity discovery, how to find product sources. Those were just a few that I showed you. There are so many other ways to find products. Companies that don't even sell on Amazon. Um, vertical product creation. So a supplier negotiation. If any of you have not entered wholesale sourcing yet, there are some uh, strategies you can use to get better prices from suppliers that um, a lot of folks don't know about. Um, vertical product creation. So if I find a, a niche market that's crazy fanatical, I will create, it's called, um, I will create uh, multiple bundles for that market. And then next step, and this is one of the, the uh, future modules in the Bundle Master Class, the next step is I'll drive traffic from Facebook to an opt-in page to start building an email list of people who love mermaids, for example, and then send them over to Amazon. So I'm not breaking Amazon's terms of service, but now I'm increasing the value of that niche because now I can bring multiple bundles throughout time to a specific niche, and now I can market to them directly through my email list. Make sense? Okay, how to competition-proof your bundle. I give you all sorts of ideas on how to put a unique piece in your bundle that nobody else can um, jump on your bundle. You want to know your numbers. You know, be really careful not to just throw 100 things in a bundle because it looks cool. If the numbers don't work, this is a business. This is a business, and we're here to earn money, right? We're here to, uh, to have freedom in our lives by creating product that makes us more money than what we put into it. That's the name of the game. So when you know your numbers, it makes it really easy to make a decision on what things to carry and market. Listing creation optimization, key. You can put like the best product ever since sliced bread on, up on Amazon, but if your listing doesn't convert, if you can't get those eyeballs on the listing, then it's for naught. And I teach you how to optimize your listings. Uh, create sales traction, how to get it going. How, you don't have any reviews, you've got a new product up there, but through keyword uh, research and really optimizing your listing, you can get traction without reviews. And then automate and outsource the process. When you have a bundle that hits and it's doing well, how do you automate the creation of that bundle and how do you outsource it? Make sense? Awesome, okay. So here's just a couple of uh, other people who are in the Bundle Masterclass, Maria Tori. Uh, she says that I filled in the blanks, even though she knew how to bundle. She was already doing some bundles. I, by learning my way of doing niche market research, um, she wasted less time and money on bundles that didn't hit because she started with product research. And then uh, Jerry says that uh, he liked my, my unique way of uh, diving deep and that uh, I teach this model that uh, I haven't found anybody else teaching by doing niche market research first before buying products. 
you guys have any questions? Let me. Uh, are you opposing on? brands in bundles? Uh, what was that question? Uh, the rules on opposing brands in bundles, like using big brands. Yeah, so it, it, I, I'm not going to be able to go into that in depth on this webinar um, because we're, we're getting close to the top of the hour. But what you can do is post that in Sean's group, and then we can have a discussion about that. And I can post the link to Amazon's terms of service, and then we can discuss what their terms of service mean um, in terms of mixing brands, okay? So, Sean, where can they post the, the more in-depth questions so that we can, you know, really dive deep into answering the questions? I'm going to post that. I'll put that in the chat right now. Awesome. So go ahead and say it out loud for those of us uh, on the webinar who, who can't see the chat. What is the name of that group they can post questions okay. in? It's um, Groceries on FBA. We'll say so go to Facebook.com, and it's a group called Groceries on FBA. Right. Or you can go to Facebook.com slash group slash Amazon.Groceries. Okay, perfect. So we have that um, uh, auditory so that people um, can go there on the webinar. Okay, so I'm just going to keep going. Um, when you order, the, the Bundle Masterclass is open right now. We're doing a special through Sunday. Uh, so what you're going to get is the entire Masterclass, like 42 different modules uh, and uh, taught in different ways. So there's going to be lives, there's going to be presentations, there's checklists, there's, you're also going to get my trade show car calendar. So you'll get 3,500 niche trade shows where you can find the suppliers for niche markets in those trade shows on the websites. Um, and you can get niche market ideas. I give you a, a cheat sheet for 100 niche market ideas. It's always growing. Wholesale supplier directory, uh, just to give you a leg up right away, you can, there's 200 wholesale suppliers. Niche market validation checklist. Uh, so I, I show you how to validate your niche markets before you go sourcing any product. Product criteria checklist, competitor tracking. I give you all of these checklists that you can use to validate your product idea, your market idea and your product idea before you ever invest money into uh, any product. And then there's exercises at the end of each module because I truly believe when you're learning something, uh, my system is to watch a lesson, implement, watch a lesson, implement. So by having exercises, it helps you really kind of coalesce the information I'm teaching you and really get it in your brain before you move on, make it habit before you move on to the next lesson, which makes you um, uh, able to implement the information in your business as opposed to just watching a bunch of videos, right? And then discounts off of next level solo tools are on the course as well. The real cost of education. So I have made some huge mistakes. <laughs> I have bought pallets of liquidation product and shelf pulls and, uh, you know, 85, 90% of what I bought was just bad. I have made some big mistakes and I have learned from those mistakes in my Amazon business. And uh, now I hope I'm doing it a lot better because I learned from those mistakes. But I'll tell you, some of those mistakes cost me some money. They cost me money. I had to eat a lot of stuff when I was doing it the wrong way. So the cost of the real cost of education is um, the mistakes I help you not make because you're learning to do, you're learning from basically the mistakes that cost me. And then what if you get suspended? What if you do something, okay, here's something not a lot of people know yet. You can't use a UPC code you buy off of eBay anymore. That used to be the case, it is no longer the case. You could easily get your entire account suspended. Gone, everything if you use a UPC code from a third party seller. And in the Bundle Masterclass, I, taught, I teach you how to uh, apply for a GTIN exemption, step by step, how to apply for it to keep your account safe. Plus, you're, you know, if you get suspe suspended, you have to pay for someone, hopefully, to get you unsuspended, and plus the lost sales. Live events, if you go to a live event, which I do a lot of, by the way, I'm headed to four or five of them in the next couple of months. Uh, it could cost you, it will cost you thousands of dollars to go, in tra just in travel expenses and registration to go to these events. Well, I go for you. And whatever I learn that's new in regards to the Amazon marketplace, I will bring it back to you and put it in the private mastermind group for the bundle masterclass. So you can leverage my freedom to go. I, I have freedom of time and, and energy and finances to go to these events where some people don't, they have, you know, they're, they're uh, they have to stay home with the kids and they have to, you know, they've got a real job and they don't have the freedom that I have. So you get to leverage the freedom of my time and finances for all the events I'm going to, I bring that information into the bundle masterclass. And then high-end courses, you can spend two, three, five thousand $5,000 for high-end uh, courses and coaching, and that doesn't leave you a whole lot of money left 
to actually invest in, in product, right? And bring product to market. So the, the cost of the bundle masterclass allows you to put most of your, your money in the inventory, invest in the inventory. So Sean, I know you've got some bonuses. Let's talk about the bundle masterclass. The investment is just $2.99 using your link, but you're gonna even sweeten the pot more. Tell us a little bit about what you're bringing to the bundle masterclass to your students. Uh, okay, so uh, if you sign up with um, my So you've gone dead Sean. I think what Sean's saying is when you sign, sign up under bundle.seanmayo.com He's gonna give you some fun stuff. Not only will you get the bundle masterclass for $2.99 You have to use the discount code Mayo. Sean, can I hear you? Nope, can't hear you. So not only will you get the discount code uh, or you get the price of $2.99 using the discount code Mayo, but he's going to give you a really cool bonus. I'm not quite sure what it is, but I'm pretty sure it has something to do with uh... No, I can hear you. Okay. Tell us your bonus. Um, all right. Get close to your computer so we can hear you. Right. So what we talked about um, at the beginning was you get a um, you get access to my uh, top hundred thousand uh, products in twenty three different categories. It's updated daily, so uh, you don't have to worry about going out and finding what the top selling products are. Uh, you can. Uh, we're just going to give you a list of them. So it's about two point three million products. It's updated daily, Monday through Friday. Uh, you know, separated by category from one to you know around a hundred thousand. Um, you know, sometimes there's uh, things that don't. So it may go a little over 100,000, but you're getting about the top 100,000 products in all the categories that you'd be bundling in. Okay, um, Sean, let me let me explain it. Let me tie it together for you folks who are on the webinar why this is important. So when you know what the top 100,000 per category selling products are, you can start seeing trends and maybe a lot of related products, which could give you ideas for niche markets, fanatical niche markets that you hadn't considered. And that's just one, one use of it. You could also find suppliers for products with this list. There's so many ways you could use that top 100,000 ASINs. Go ahead, Sean. Um, right, so you're gonna, get, uh, you're gonna get access to that for, um, you know, for, for a month. We're gonna give you daily updates for, um, you know, for one month. Uh, you know. What's the value of that, Sean? Um, it's, uh, we charge $68. Okay, so he's tossing in $68 worth of value just for this top 100 ASINs. Um, and that is like, first of all, I think that's worth a whole lot more than $68. That's crazy. If I had to pay someone to pull the top 100 ASINs fresh, you know, brand new, that would cost me a lot more than 68 bucks. So I, I would argue that that value of having that list is tremendous. Um, but uh, go ahead, Sean. What else? Right. So until we came up with that, you know, um, I mean, it would cost us several hundred dollars to be able to pull that from the API. Um, and, you know, it took a couple of weeks to do it. So, you know, it wasn't very fresh until, uh, you know, we kind of figured out a way to, uh, to bring it to everybody. So uh, I don't really know if anybody else is doing that. Obviously, uh, I doubt they're doing it to that price. So, uh, awesome. Hey, Sean, um, we, uh, at the beginning we said you were going to actually give something away to the people who made it to the end of this webinar. And by the way, go over to bundle.seanmayo.com, enroll in the Bundle Masterclass by Sunday. This Sunday, what is it, February uh, uh, la, 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 18th, February 18th, 2018, um, by 1159 p.m., and you will get the course for only $2.99 plus Sean's bonus. But you've got to register by Sunday night. Go to bundle.seanmayo.com. Sean, what do you have to give away uh, to uh, someone who, some lucky winner who has hung in there to the end of this presentation? All right, so... Uh... We're giving away what we just talked about, the top 100,000 products. Uh, I'm going to share my screen here. Are, are you done? Can I share? Go for it. Um, you have to finish sharing because I'm not there. Oh, I'm sorry about that. There we go. Uh, I'm, I was looking at the chat here. All right. So let me just... Okay, so I'm going to share the screen. Um, all the... I don't want to show everybody's email, but uh, I can see they're all uh, up above there. Uh, so when I hit pick one, we're going to pick it. And what, what you're going to get is we're giving you lifetime access to, um, 
to what we just talked about, the top 100,000 products. Uh, so it's $68 a month, and that's about an $8,000 or more value, depending on, you know, how long you use it. Well, and then and that list is updated. How, how often is that list updated? Every day. Updated. Every day. That's uh, crazy. But we update it around noon. So by noon, you'll have uh, the newest list. It's, um, it's a Gumroad thing, so you can log in uh, and, you know, just download whichever one you want. Uh, if you use anything like Scan Power Evaluate or, um, you know, Tactical Arbitrage, obviously, or any of the dozens of other evaluation tools that are out there now, um, we split them up into 25,000 line files. So that's basically nice. What everyone uses. So when you get that, um, you basically just have to download it and you can immediately upload it into it. Well, and I know you give instructions on how to use it too. So, um, so let's go ahead and find a lucky winner. The 48 people hung in there on this webinar. One of you is going to win this lifetime access. Sweet Jamaica shopping at gmail.com. Are you on here? Is that your email address? Shout it out in the chat. And oh, is that it's at you, uh, Sweet Jamaica shopping at gmail.com. Are you on this webinar? No. Oh, shout it out in the chat if you are on this webinar. Okay. So, I, Go ahead, Sean. Pick another one. Jalapro, Jail Pro, 1982. Jale Pro, Pro? <laughs> Are you on this webinar? All right, just put it in the chat. Yes. So I think what we might do is, uh, should we stop the recording now, Sean? <laughs> uh, yeah, you can. All right, I'm going to stop the recording.